All right, in this lecture, we're going to talk about uh, parallel debugging and interactivity uh, with IPython. So we've used IPython a little bit in the class uh, for profiling, you know, timing functions uh, and other things like that. It turns out it, it works really well uh, for parallel debugging uh, and interactive interactivity with parallel programs. So, you know, debugging is really hard with parallel programs. You know, print statements are inefficient, as we've seen. Um, if you just stick a, a print statement in an MPI program, you're going to get a, a printout on every rank. And so, you know, if you had several hundred of processors, uh, it would be very hard to dig through and see uh, what, uh, you know, what the variables are. And of course, if you just restricted it to a single variable, it may turn out that your problem is not on the rank that you restrict it to. So if you had an if statement that said, you know, if rank is zero, uh, do something, well, it, it may not be that on rank zero is where your problem is, so you may not be able to catch your problem. Um, traditional de debuggers, like, you know, this would be for code C, C++ or Fortran code uh, that you might use GDB, uh, don't work very well with uh, parallel applications. Again, here, there's a way to do it, but you have to launch, say, multiple instances of X term, and uh, it can be quite, uh, and then you kind of have to debug each rank individually. And that can be cumbersome as well. Uh, there's a tool called TotalView, which is a great debugger, uh, but, you know, it's expensive, and you can use that with your other code. And so uh, here enters IPython. Now, of course, IPython is a, you know, restricted to Python programs, but um, if you were to template your, or, you know, prototype your parallel algorithm in Python, or, you know, your actual production code was in Python, then this would be a great way to, uh, to debug your algorithm. So it takes a little bit of setup uh, to, to set this up. You, you know, of course, you need IPython on the machine that you want to uh, run this on, if that's not obvious. You're also going to need uh, an M MPI installation, which of course should also be obvious. Um, and IPython itself has some parallel functionality without, uh, you know, without MPI for Pi. But if you want to, you know, test out your say MPI for Pi uh, code or algorithms, then you should have that installed as well. And uh, you'll need to run this, you know, the very first time that you set set it up, you'll need to run this this. Uh, program right here and it's going to put a special file ipclusterconfig.py uh, it's going to put this file in your iPod uh, in your installation directory on Shamu for those of you uh, running this on Shamu this is going to be in your home directory in a hidden file config uh, ipython ipython I'm having some trouble with my pen here. Um, and then profile, MPI, cluster config. Um, and you're going to want to add this line to that file. This You'll only have to do this once. Uh, and after that, you, you should be uh, good to go. So then what you want to do is uh, launch a set of parallel kernels. And you know on Shamu, you'll need to do this from a Q-login, you know, from a compute node. Um, you can do it by just issuing these commands where n would be the number of processors. So in this case, you know, it would be a four processor job. And this takes a second to launch, so I'm going to go ahead and switch over the command and get this launched on Shamu, uh, and then we'll come back and talk about the rest. Um, but basically, just like uh, it's in th the file there, we're going to Q log in. Uh, you can see that uh, I'm on a compute node. Uh, we're going to need to run module load Python and module load open MPI to make those executables available to the compute node. And then we'll run this IP cluster start profile MPI. And of course, I already have uh, the profile MPI set up. From, so I don't need to go through the setup process. We'll go ahead and launch four kernels. And don't forget to put the ampersand on the end so that it runs in the background. 
So we're going to go ahead and get that going. It takes a few seconds to launch. I'll go back to the slide here. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and just launch IPython. And when we do that, we can then uh, do, you know, interact with uh, the parallel job. So the first thing we'll do, uh, you're going to load a couple of special commands there. Um, uh, and then the first thing we'll do is just print the IDs of the ranks that are open. And you'll see that since we started a four processor job, we should expect to see uh, four, four ranks. So uh, there we got the message that uh, the engines uh, appear to have started successfully. So for some reason it doesn't, it doesn't uh, return, but you can see that we do have access to a shell here. I'll go ahead and launch IPython. I'm going to launch it, uh, well, I'll just go ahead and launch IPython. And then we'll issue the commands that we see there. So, so, so from IPython parallel import client. And then we're going to instantiate an object C that is a client with the profile equal to MPI. And if we then look at the IDs, you'll see that those are the rank IDs of the four running jobs. So if we just started two, then there would just be two there. And I'm going to go ahead and get out of that for now. We'll come back to it. So then we're going to go ahead and show you how to interactively run a parallel script. So here's a, a little parallel script that actually um, computes the sum of a vector A across all processors. So if A is partitioned across, you know, many processors, the sum that's computed on every processor, every rank, is going to be the total sum across all the processors. So if you have four processors, you're going to get the same value on all four processors of the sum, but th the sum is going to be conducted in kind of a crazy parallel way that, that's distributed across all the processors. You typically wouldn't want to do something like that. This is just for demonstration purposes. So then we'll go ahead and uh, connect to IPython, and then we'll run this script. So I'm going to walk you through the script real quickly, and we'll go through it. So the very first uh, part is just the same. Um, we're going to uh, set up a variable v that a view that rather that has access to uh, a client, and then this view activate activates some special functions that are available from within IPython, most notably this parallel execute command here. But then we're going to run uh, the psum command, uh, which is, of course, up here. We're going to run that. And by in, uh, running it as a method of view, what this is going to do is instantiate this definition or this script on all the active ranks. So it'll you know, be, on this case, in, across all four ranks. And then what we can do is say, in this case, parallel execute will instantiate or uh, rather initialize a variable A that's just a, a random uh, vector of 100 elements. And it'll be instantiated on all four ranks. Um, and then we'll do the sum. We'll call this P sum, and then we'll take a look at it. So um, this will make more sense, of course, once you get to kind of see the interactivity. OK, so I'm going to do something a little different this time. I'm going to actually run uh, uh, a graphical version of IPython. And uh, the, the way we'll launch that is uh, through um, IPython QT console. This is available on Shamu on, on all the compute nodes. I'm going to run a command called PyLab, which actually automatically um, imports NumPy, SciPy, and Matplotlib. And then uh, we're going to run this inline. Um, and uh, I'll show you what that is in just a second. But if we go ahead and run that, and of course our IP clusters are still running in the background, so we can connect to them momentarily. Um, but uh, make this bigger here. OK. So this is a little graphical IPython that's running. And uh, we'll start off just like we did before. We'll say from IPython parallel import client. And then we're going to say client 
So now you notice that since we're in this graphical live Python, we get some kind of pop-up windows that help us uh, auto-complete, uh, fill in the information. I kind of think they're annoying, but uh, they help you know you if you're not very familiar with the syntax. So I'm just going to make all of C available as view, and then um, we're going to run this view activate, which again activates some magic functions, which we'll use momentarily. We're going to run psum on all the ranks. So what view does, view uh, when, when run is a method of view, it's going to run and instantiate the definition of our parallel sum on all the ranks. And of course, in that file, we also imported MPI for pi and numpy as MP. So then we'll be able to use uh, that, uh, you know, the NP definition of numpy. So uh, then we're going to run this magic function. The, the percent sign there means magic function in IPython. So this means parallel execute A. And what we're going to do is then run in parallel. We're going to create a vector A on that's going to be 100 elements long. And we're going to do it on all of the ranks. So if we execute this, then we can take a look at what view A is. And you can see there that, uh, you know, or here you can see uh, at least part of the, the data there that, that is a, uh, each of those that correspond to, each of those arrays correspond to one that's on, on a rank apiece. So then if we, again, parallel execute via magic function, the sum of P sum A, then we can view what that is. And so there are the, the individual sums uh, of all of the, now that you get the same number there because it's basically summing up across all ranks on each processor. So again, this is not something you normally do, but uh, just to kind of show you, uh, you know, what you have here. So some more, fun, you know, interactive functionality. We might have also, say, a vector B uh, that we want to scatter to all the ranks. So let's say B is a, uh, well, I'm sorry. We don't need to, we say view scatter a vector B that is a NumPy array, say, of length 20. And the data type would be NumPy uh, double, for instance. Oops, let's just say double. Sorry, wasn't sure. Set a syntax there. Uh, instead of uh, array, it should be a range. So uh, now, if we take a look at what a is, we can see that we scattered that vector uh, that was originally, uh, you know, uh, of length 20 to the four ranks. Each of those correspond to one of the ranks. Now we might uh, sum them up. Uh, and this time, instead of running, the, you know, our our crazy sum, we'll, we'll use NumPy's sum feature. So we can just do sum A. Again, this is going to run on all of the ranks individually, and uh, and we can uh, take a look at what S is. Okay. So the reason I ran this in Qt console and and using PyLab is because I wanted to show you what, you know, some more interactive features uh, in in that parallel debugging. So, you know, not only can we, you know, look through and check out the, the values of variables interactively, but we can also plot them uh, right in a, in a kind of a notebook format interactively from within this uh, Qt console and PyLab. So uh, we're just going to, it gave us, a, it made available to us all of the kind of plot functionality. Uh, so say we wanted to plot the individual values of A on each processor. You could do something like that, okay? Or if we wanted to plot then S, 
we could do that. So, uh, you know, th this was just an example, you know, of some of the things that you might do. You, you'd kind of interactively investigate the variables, maybe do some plots, uh, you know, do some distributed plots across all the processors, uh, you know, we can do things like this. So uh, it makes it, makes it quite interesting. So finally, uh, if we just go back and just want to make the last statement that whenever you do this, you can't forget to stop your, uh, you know, to kill your, cl your, your cluster. So uh, if we go back over here, uh, we'll just control C to get rid of the, the uh, QT console, but then we need to offer the uh, command IP cluster uh, stop. profile MPI and uh, there it'll stop it and so then we can just go ahead and, and uh, log off out of Q login and we're back to the head node. So this is a way that you might use uh, IPython to inter interactively investigate your parallel jobs.